Hey everyone, how's it going? Shuffles back here with another video, and today we have a bit of a special video because Elfelt just got buffed. Uh, it is now 4 o'clock in the morning, so she's been buffed for a couple of hours. I did decide to do a random live stream in the middle of the night, so we um, did some testing. I'm going to show you guys the gear. I'm going to show you guys a bunch of fights. I think there's four fights, maybe five. Quick, 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 bleh, you can tell it's early in the morning. Quick disclaimer. Uh, she's not skilled up. She's only plus four. And I will show you the gear, but she is on a zero, well, not zero, but close to zero crit rate build with high crit damage and very, very fast. So she's not on a full damage build. She's 270 something speed. Uh, I believe the gear is after the first fight, but I have to comment over it because we were playing copyright music. Um, so I'll try and let you guys know. Uh, just keep in mind that this is from stream, so I'm trying to voice over it as we go. Let's just jump right into it with the first fight. All right, here we are. Yes, we knew. Um, let's also mute that. So first fight, you can see we are trying to cleave. Uh, we're matched up against Solara, a very, very good player uh, from one of, the top, one of the top guilds. I'm pretty confident that our cleave should work here. But we bring Elfelt at the end just because we're trying to force the Elfelt. Also, she does have the ability to be good against that Selene and against the Polly as well if we outspeed them. So, uh, Also, I did mention at the beginning she's not skilled up. She's plus four. Plus two on her skill three and plus two on her skill two. Which means she only has an 85% chance to land with each. So we do get Oxlot's first turn here. If we use our non-attack skill, it's going to kind of screw us. We're going to get countered. So I decided not to and just go straight into the poly. Instead of burning, I wanted to save the burn here. So I decided to try this at 85% chance. We go into the poly because the poly was going to cut us. And we don't land it. So we don't get the strip. I give him the laughing emote. He cries back. <laughs> we, we know each other relatively well. We played each other so many times. And obviously we don't get the crit there. So we only get Polly down to half health. Because we didn't land any of the debuffs, the Polly cuts us. Uh, so this is not a great showcase, at, at least for turn one. But the thought was that she would be dead. So now we get debuffed all to hell. Um, I left this one in because she does get another turn. So he goes next. Gives himself immunity. Drops us down to about half health. We get our skill 3. Uh, I can't skill 2 because there's no shields. But I can give our LQC an attack buff here. And hopefully strip, push back, and put up shields. If we get back around to another secret turn. Uh, knowing that I'm much faster than him. It's my only chance. Unfortunately, we only land 1 crit. And we get no pushbacks. And we get countered. And we get stunned. <laughs> so... This fight not going well. Uh, the Robbie doesn't do much there to our Oxlots. We have a really tanky Oxlots. But I did save the souls from earlier. So now those souls that I didn't use on Elfelt on turn 1, I can burn into the LQC. I decide to go into the Robbie Because that's the majority of his damage. So we go into the Robbie, kill the Robbie, get an extra turn... Go into her. We half health, half health the Selene. And now we're back around to Elfelt's turn. Unfortunately, oh wait, sorry. It's still Selene's turn. Selene's turn goes into our Oxlots, who's crazy tanky, like I said. Uh, he actually lives here because of how tanky he is. I could boost here, but if I do, I'm going to get countered because I still haven't used the non-attack skill. So I decide to let myself run out of time by accident. I was going to skill one. Uh, in an attempt to get back around on the skill, but I end up skill 3 because I ran out of time. It does quite literally nothing other than reduce the cooldown of the crowd. Um, I try and use the skill 2 here to try and potentially crit, even though I have basically 0 crit rate. That obviously doesn't work. He can't do anything to my LQC. 
He decides to knock over the Oxlots, which is important because when we kill her, when we kill the Polly, we would be able to Oxlots back into her again. Um, Elfelt still does nothing. He does get a team up here into our LQC, but unfortunately for him, that procs her scythe, which means we're for sure going to be able to kill this Polly. We might have killed her anyway, but that guarantees we kill her with 11k damage. And now we're in pretty good shape. He drops the poly down to basically 0 HP. Could kill the poly here, but decides to uh, go into... Wait. I think he goes into the LQC. Now I don't remember. Yeah, he goes into the LQC. Drops her into scythe range again. We still can't do much. We skill 1. We get 3300 damage out of that, which isn't bad. But we go into stealth because we have guiding light on her. Um... Which pretty much guarantees us the win at this point because we have our skill 3. We also have attack buff still and the scythe proc. So we're able to one-shot the crown. And the, the whole reason I left this fight in was one, because it was a fun fight and we ended up coming back after completely butchering the start. But two, we actually get our skill 3 off here. And we get to burn into it. So this is what basically everybody's waiting for. <clears throat> So we get the defense break in the sleep with about 2k damage. And then we can skill 3, which is a guaranteed crit. And we get 12k damage out of our skill 3, and we get the kill. So nothing too fancy there, but that is the end of the fight 1. Let me find the second one, and I'll be right back. Alright, so apparently I didn't go right into the second fight. I think I said this in the introduction. I go and I show the gear here, so may as well show you guys what the stats are before we go into the next fight. Um, otherwise, I'll get all my videos confused and I will forget part of it. So I think first I show the LQC. I apologize if you don't want to see the LQC, but she did some pretty crazy damage in that fight. Uh, oh no, we do show the elf out first. So here's my elf out stats. Here's the gear. If you want to pause it and look, you can. She got 3k attack, 276 speed, which is the important part. Again, she has no crit, but once she lands the sleep with her skill 3, which you can guarantee with a burn, uh, she's guaranteed to crit on her skill 2, because you always crit into sleep. So, I decided to build her on high crit damage for that reason. And here's a quick look at the LQC, if you're curious as to what she looks like. Um, she's kind of my pride and joy with the 4k attack and 300 crit damage on speed immunity with 100% crit rate, and of course scythe. Um... But that's not what you guys are here for, so let's jump into the second fight. Alright, so here's the second one. The draft is already underway. Um, facing another really good player. This guy decides to lead with a couple of strips. I go with the double cleanses. He goes with the Robbie. And then I he goes with the Riot last pick. So I decided that this is a good spot to try and go with the Elf Elt here. Um, because she can be really good into the Rylet. Problem being is that I don't have a mage in here in order to bring her in and be able to burn. Which is a big issue. That's part of the reason why I left this one in. Um, kind of tricky. Like she's You can't just always pick her. Because... If I can't burn, now granted, she's only 85% here. So if she's 100%, yeah, you have a better chance to win. But you're bringing her in with knowing that you get 15% resisted. At least if you bring Flurry and you get 15% resisted, she can still do stuff after her skill 3. If Elfel gets 15% resisted, then what? Right? You're kind of stuck at that point. Um, also, with the t the rest of the team having full immunity, and if, if you don't have a strip, you're also in trouble. In this case, we happen to have a strip, which works out kind of nicely. Uh, so we have our Lytica to go first. She can get rid of all the immunity, or at least hopefully. In this case, there's only two units with immunity, which is kind of rare. Um, so, of course, we go for the strip. We do miss on the Rylet. Um, but he has three buffs, so we're a little worried here coming into this. Of course, we can't burn. We 
we do land, but we Dreamblade proc. So something else to keep in mind if you are trying to use the, her into somebody like that, if you Dreamblade proc, you will land nothing. Um, because we Dreamblade proc, we can't do anything anymore. And although we got the strip, it doesn't matter. We're just dead now. Um, this fight, obviously we lose. We do get the reset of the Bizarre here because we have to deal with him before he strips us. But at this point, what are we going to do? We have no way to come back. He can just pretty much snipe us one by one. And uh, yeah, we have no chance of, of winning this fight. We have no way to kill Robin. And now, because she's already burnt her skill, we also have no way to kill Rylet. We also didn't proc stealth. Um, we could probably afford to speed this one up so this video is not ultra, ultra long if you guys want to see the finish. Okay, let's go two times speed. We dream blade again. <laughs> He still has no. He still doesn't have his evasion buff, but we did dream blade multiple times into no evasion buff, which kind of sucks. And because she's squishy, like if that was flurry, we could have potentially brought that back, right? But because it's Elfel and she's squishy, there's nothing we can do. So let's just jump right into the next one. Uh, yeah. Let's slow this back down again. Here we'll leave it one point five through the draft. So I think this fight, we don't end up picking her. He ends up picking her, and he actually wins. So not all of these fights are her losing, uh, although she did technically win the first one. I was trying to cleave here or try and do something a little more offensive where we could potentially make her work. So that's why I was leading with the Flitica. Uh, but he counters with Cerise and Elfelt. So right away, I'm like, all right, cool. We'll let her use her. And we'll see if he can make her work. So I decided to go with the standard counter. I go against Cleave just to kind of see what would happen. And he continues with the standard Cleave. So pretty much what you would expect here. Um, he goes with the Cerise, he goes with the Sedum. I'll slow this back down again once we get into the fight. Designer Lilibet is actually a very good counter here. Um, because once the defense break lands from the elf out, she would automatically cleanse and get a turn. So I decided to go with Sage. Um, but then he goes with another strip, and that kind of messes me up. I think I misplay this. I think if I ban the Cerise, I probably win, because I probably outspeed the Tenebria. But he bans my Lilibet, which messes me up and gives him a really good chance to win here. Because he's obviously going to out his Cerise is going to outspeed my Flitica. It's close, but he does outspeed my Flitica. And um, obviously at this point, if he restricts my Sage, then he can probably get the defense break and potentially get another turn because he's going to boost the CDOM as well, right? So we were 99% of his Cerise, really close. But of course, he only lands one Restrict, and it happens to be on the Sage. So unfortunate there, nothing we can do. Uh, he did miss on the Cecilia, which is cool, but now CDOM gets a turn. She burns, can't kill. He gets an RB team up to finish the kill and soften up. And at this point, we're already dead. Like, we've lost half of our remaining damage. And he goes into her. You can see this damage here. We have no damage reduction, though. But this is the highest damage one we've seen so far. Uh, so he must have pretty good gear on her. She does 4k damage on her skill 3 into, I think, 20k here. Yeah, he gets 20k there. Which is nice, but it's, again, it's into a zero defense unit um, that's defense broken with um, with no damage reduction. So 
It's really not that good when you think about it that way. Like, almost anybody could do that damage. Especially since it was into a defense break. Uh, so we lose this one. But I feel like this one we just lose because we misplayed it. Um, there's things I could have done in the draft to win that fight, and I just I messed it up not thinking. I kind of just let him outspeed me. But at least you get to see, that's probably a pretty high damage, I would assume. I haven't seen his build. Uh, pretty high damage elf out there. But I really don't think he won that because of her. He won that because I screwed up. <laughs> we had another interesting fight here against Zodi, uh, another content creator. And I'm sure if you're watching this on YouTube, you guys all know Zodi. So I thought this was an interesting fight too. He brings he tries to bring his in against me as well. These are all back to back to back fights. Um which is kind of funny that all of us logged on at reset trying to get fights so that we could uh we could test her out. I don't think Solara streams at all. I don't know if he ever has. Um but obviously a lot of people know Solara from from his guild and um Then we've got a couple of, con uh, well, I don't know if Zodi streams. If he does, he streams on YouTube. But I know he creates, he makes videos for YouTube. And uh, of course, the last one as well. So here, I wasn't sure what we were going to do. We start off bruising. I was going to try and take her late, but I think he takes her here. I'm trying to remember what happened here. It's uh, past four o'clock in the morning, but I'm pretty sure he takes her in this next pick here. Yeah, let's speed this up again. No need to go normal speed through the draft. So I go landing. Seems like she would be a good pick here. Obviously I have two nature units. He goes with Elfelt. He goes with the Strip. I go with the Cleanse again into those two. I can't. I have no idea what I go last pick here. <laughs> and then I go with another Cleanse. So my game plan here is to bring two Cleanses into his Strip. But he bans the Lilibet, which is interesting. Um, the Lilibet ban means that he can just go straight into the Ray. Because um, he can burn into it and ignore res, right? Similar to what people were doing with Cowric into high-res cleansers. Is that she can burn, land the sleep, and land the defense break right away. And then you're in trouble. So I do have a cleanse. But the question is, is he ever going to get a turn? Um, Cerise obviously goes first. Nothing we can do about that. We do resist with our Ray as expected. Um, he is 260 res. I think I show his gear after this as well, if I remember correctly. But now Elfeld's turn. And if he is able to kill my Ray, who you're going to see is quite squishy, um, it's just GG because I can't cleanse any of those debuffs off. So he does burn into it. We'll get a chance to see the damage here from Zodis. So it's a little over 2k. He does land the defense break and the sleep. Goes into his skill 3. Does 6,000 something but doesn't kill the Ray. Um, also wakes him up. And now all of a sudden, because he only got 6k damage and not able to kill a uh, squishy high-res healer, he just auto-loses and has to quit. Um, I could feel his frustration there, getting such little damage on a unit like him. But he had to try it. He played it right. It's just Elfeld's damage is really, really bad. And she's going to be kind of hard to use for that reason. Um, I do, I'm going to show the Ray gear here. 
just because I think it's important to see how not tanky he is. <laughs> Use all the pop ups. There is a collab pack up if you guys are interested. Pretty typical pack. It's the same as all the event packs that they put out. So keep in mind, um, he's a very good player. He's finished Legend. Um, he's already back in Legend here in the preseason. And this is his build as well, and he wasn't able to kill this unit when you see his stats. So there's my Ray. He's 11,800 HP with 1,400 defense. So he does have high defense, but he defense broke him and still wasn't able to get through 12k HP. So kind of an issue there for a damage dealer not to be able to do enough damage to kill a squishy unit. Um... It, it's going to be hard to use her if that's the case, and you're not able to get enough damage to kill units like that. Because in, in that in that case, why are you bringing him in? You could just go with blue Tywin, you could defense break, and you could boost the unit after so, so you don't get cut. Because you're burning anyway. So you may as well... At that point, you may as well go blue Tywin. Now granted, I had all nature units in there, but just as an example... Uh, blue Tywin, she seems like kind of a worse blue Tywin in a way. In some ways she would be better, but remember blue Tywin would be tanky and could potentially absorb some damage instead of just being useless after, after she moves. Um, but yeah, I, I keep in mind again, this is a very, very fast build, um, Mine would do more damage. I think I get to use mine in this fight. Um, mine is really fast anyway. She's like 270 something or whatever I showed earlier. But we could build her on more damage. The problem is then if we build her on more damage, when is she going to get a turn? So it's kind of hit and miss as to how you want to build her and what kind of team you're going to build her with. I really am not sure yet. You could use her in arena. Uh, in RTA, though, she kind of reminds me of Tam Izaria combos or um, Basar Tywin combos in that combinations just don't really work all that well in RTA because one of them can always get banned. You could ban the strip. You could ban her. <laughs> you could ban the mage so that they can't burn into it. There's a lot of things you can do to kind of stop her from doing her thing. Not to mention that she doesn't do enough damage to kill anybody, which is the main issue. Now, you could build her on damage, and you could Oxlots boost her, which would be interesting. But at that point, why not use something else, right? Then you don't have a strip. Then you're going strip into Oxlots into her, and then hopefully into an AoE, which you won't be able to bridge the gap to. It's going to be really difficult. So this fight, we, this is a really weird draft. <laughs> I'm trying to force her in here, but I'm not really sure what he's going to do last pick. Um, I decided to go with her and a mage. Reason being, I wanted to burn into her. And I was trying to prove a point that it's going to be really hard to get her and a mage through. So looking at this draft, if I draft her and I want to burn into her, I'm really worried that like I'm forced to take a mage to burn into her. And I would never take it. I would never take Spectre in that position. He ends up going an interesting pick at the end in Vivian, uh, and I want to use her to kill the Vivian because she is really fast, um, and I'm pretty convinced that she's going to be faster than his Vivian. And she's on Guiding Light, so we don't have to worry about the flurry. So kind of an interesting pick here. I'm worried he's going to ban her, but he doesn't. Um, he decides to ban my Alencia because Alencia is crazy good into Vivian. Um, so we get our mage through and we get her through. So this is going to be the last fight of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already and you enjoyed the video. Um, but this is, I think, the most interesting and the most telling of them all. So he does get first turn. 
But like I said, we are in Guiding Light, so he can't provoke us, which is really nice. He goes into her. Unfortunately, lands the strip and both debuffs, so we're not going to be able to put up our thing. But we decide to burn into this because we really want to land it. Again, this is on a crit damage build, so we don't have much in the way of crit rate. So this first attack is rarely going to crit. We get 1,500 damage despite the no crit, but now we're guaranteed to crit because of the sleep. We can go into this, get the quote-unquote big damage into it, and we get 6k damage. <laughs> 6,600 or something like that. Similar to what he did to my Ray. Uh, and not able to kill Vivian because there is a little bit of damage share there, I believe. He's got, uh, he's got Aureus on his Raz, which is able to keep her alive. So... Against really squishy teams with no damage reduction, she would have died. But, like, if there's any damage reduction, she can't kill anything, which is a huge, huge, huge issue. Like, if you can't kill a Vivian with two turns and a defense break and you're a damage dealer, what are you there for? I don't want to be blunt, but seriously, what are you there for? Um, and she's not on bad gear. She just is really fast. And obviously, like, Again, I know someone in the comment section inevitably is going to say it, but she's not skilled up. She would have killed there. But, like, is that good enough? You say she jumps from 6k damage to 10k damage and she kills. Are you happy with 10k damage there? Because we can't defense break anybody else. She's just a nuker at that point. Why wouldn't you use Rylet or anybody? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't see the reason why you would bring her into the comp. Um, if you guys have any ideas, I'd love to hear them down in the comment section down below. But we did end up winning the fight, and we won a couple of fights with her. They just weren't overly successful in terms of what she brought to the table. Um, I would like to hear what kind of comps you guys think, uh, at least for the next 24 hours or so. I'll try and pay attention in the comment section and I'll kind of play devil's advocate. And if you guys post an idea, I will try and at least come back with you with why I think that will work or why I think it won't work. Um, we will be testing her and Saul again, well, today. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed, and then I'm going to wake up, and we're going to stream. Um, so today on stream, in about 12 hours, we're going to be testing her and Saul on stream. If you guys want to come check it out, it'll be twitch.tv slash five finger shuffle. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. I'm exhausted. I'm going to bed. Have a good night and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye for now, guys.